In this video we're going to be talking about the text tools inside Illustrator and how to do some really simple text modifications. On the left hand side of your screen you have the type tool which is also T on the keyboard and the type tool is one of these context sensitive tools where we can either simply click once and it will just produce a line of type. By the way you'll see that Illustrator 2018 adds in this uh, basically this Latin phrase lorem ipsum um, which is basically placeholder text. And then we can type whatever we like on that line. Whenever I click off of it, I have all the basic modifications that I can do with anything else in Illustrator. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now, with the same type tool, if I draw, so if I drag and release, it will create a kind of bounding box, which it will also fill with dummy text. So this is more like a bounding box of text. So that's the difference between clicking and dragging. So let's go ahead and click and we'll call this title. And then I'll call this, this is a paragraph right here. Notice that it does some word wrapping and hyphenating whenever words are too long to fit on one line. And whenever we switch back to our standard selection tool, we have some options here. If we make it larger, it'll scale the text up. There's this button here, which will convert it to an area type, which we'll talk about later. There's the actual anchor that we can move around here. And that's what we're aligning to. This will stretch it that way. And that's the rotation tool, all right? All your typical transformations. Now, if a paragraph goes on too long, to fit on one area that you've selected, you will get this little red cross right here. We can double click that to drag out another area and it will link those two areas together. Now, usually you're not gonna be doing that in Illustrator because Illustrator isn't really for long, lengthy paragraphs of text. That's more so what InDesign is for. Um, so we're just gonna be using mostly the standard text tool. Now on the right hand side I have all of our typical settings. So I have the appearance settings. I can change the fill of the text. By default text doesn't have a stroke. I can add a stroke if I like. And then below that I have the character panel which this is determining uh, how the text looks basically. So we have the different fonts that we can use. We'll go through those in more depth later. I'm going to stay with Arial for now. We have the style of the font, so italic bold, bold italic. Certain fonts will have different options in here. So for instance, phosphate has inline, which makes it look like this, and solid, which solidifies it. Switch back to Arial. Then we have the actual text size right here. So if I click, it makes it larger. That makes it smaller. I can do that on an individual character basis. So if I highlight one character, I can make that character larger, make another character smaller. That's not a typical thing to do, but with maybe expressive typography it is. We have the letting right here. This deals with multi-line content. So if I hit return and start a new line, I can change the letting here, which will increase the amount of space between lines. Letting doesn't do anything if you only have one line, since there's nothing to give it space. Then we have kerning right here. Kerning is the space between individual letters. So if I do kerning, the word kerning itself actually has some problems with kerning. Uh, and essentially, it's you place your cursor between two letters, and then you change this value. So if I wanted these to be closer together, I would pull this down. If I wanted it to be larger, I'd increase this. Notice that kerning is a really subtle change. It should be a subtle change because typically you won't use it. If you're going to modify the entire line of text, as in you're increasing the space between every single letter, you're going to use this right here, which is the tracking. As I increase the tracking, it's going to increase the spacing between all the letters. So one letter is kerning. All the letters is tracking. There's more options once we click this, and you can play around with these and see what they all do. Below that we have the paragraph. This is how the actual paragraph is formatted. So 
with these two lines. If I change how the paragraph is aligned, it'll look different. I can justify, I can play with all different types of things. This is more useful for larger blocks of text. It's also how you add uh, indents and margins and where we can turn on and off the hyphenation. So that's the basics of the type tool in the character and paragraph panels over here. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the other typing tools. So the area type tool allows you to create text that takes the form of a shape. So if I have this circle right here and I grab my area type tool and I click within that, I need to click on the path, it will add my text within this circle. Let's go ahead and highlight everything and I will make it a little bit smaller so you can see how it fits. The type on path tool is kind of the opposite of the area type tool. So if I, let's say I grab my pin tool and I plot a few points, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fill and I'll turn on the stroke. If I use the type on path tool, I can click on the path and it will arrange it on that path. There's lots of settings to play with here to make it actually fit properly. You can mess around with that. The vertical type tool, as you can imagine, types vertically. Then there's the area vertical area type and the vertical path tool. So you can play around with all of those. Those are the basics of the typing tools. And uh, one final thing that we're going to be messing with is the touch type tool. This lets you do individual character modifications. So for instance, if I want to have like a large starting character, I could click on just that K and make it larger. Maybe I want this A to be a little bit smaller. I can change the baseline. All sorts of different things.